All right, let's look at a retirement investment strategy for a 58 year old with $600,000 in his rollover IRA. Welcome back to the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. My name is Drew Blackston. I'm a certified retirement counselor, investment advisor representative, and I'm your virtual financial advisor, helping you get to retirement, helping you get through retirement, and protecting your ability to stay in retirement. That's what we're talking about today because we're going to look at three specific areas in a retirement investment portfolio that is going to help this client understand where they are today, where are they going to be in retirement, and how they need to adjust their investment portfolio. And the three things that we're going to look at, number one is expenses. Now expenses is how much does my portfolio cost, right? Expense ratio. What an expense ratio is, if you own a mutual fund or an ETF, how much does it cost to own that mutual fund or that ETF? I've seen expense ratios range anywhere from 2% all the way down to 0.03. And what we do is we look at the entire investment portfolio and we say, what is the total expense ratio or what is the total cost to own this portfolio? Now that doesn't matter if you're being managed by another financial advisor or you're doing it yourself, we want to know how much does it cost. The second thing we're going to look at is correlations. How correlated is our portfolio to the S&P 500? If we're trying to grow our money, we want to be as close to the S&P 500 when it comes to growth as possible, maybe even beyond that if you're young and you're looking for aggressive growth. If you're stepping into retirement like this gentleman is, how correlated are you to the market? Do you want to be as aggressive as the market or do you want to be more conservative knowing that in just a few years you're going to be living off your retirement investments? And lastly, we're going to look at performance. How has our portfolio performed? Three months, six months, year to date, one year, three year, five years. How has our portfolio performed and are there differences in the way the market's performing and the way our portfolio is performing? Maybe over the long term, our portfolio has done well, but in the short term, there's been shifts in the overall stock market and our portfolio has not been adjusted for those shifts and now we're starting to see a lag in our performance. So that's what we're gonna look at today, a retirement investment strategy for a 58-year-old with $600,000. Let's look at this. I've got $600,000 in an IRA and I want to show you how we dissect someone's retirement investment portfolio to help them make better decisions with their retirement investing. And now if this is something that you're wanting, if you're wanting a your financial EKG, if you're wanting a fully tactical retirement plan built for you, in the comment section of this video is a free booklet for you. It's called the Roadmap to Retirement. It talks about different retirement income streams. Click on that booklet, download it. It's free, but there's a little box that says, yes, I want to talk to Drew. If you click that box, we can get together and we can do a fully tactical retirement income plan for you. So let's dig into this right now. We've got a six, we have $600,000. Now, as you can see, this is Joe G. He's got his account at Fidelity. We've got right at $600,000. Now, what I'm not including in this is some outside bond investments that are that make up $600,000 in this portfolio. I don't want to put those in because they're just physical QCIPs. So we've got $528,000 worth of mutual funds that we're actually going to be looking at for him. Now, the first thing we talked about on the board was expenses. So let's go to expenses real quick. Here's where I think a lot of individuals miss it. Now, Joe manages his account himself. So if you look, these are all the mutual funds that he owns. All right. So he owns all these different mutual funds. And if you look, his expenses are 0.6, meaning in order to own this mutual fund, he pays $3,156 every year in an expense ratio, meaning before he gets out of bed on January 1st of every year, he owes Fidelity or whoever these mutual funds are $3,156. That's the cost to own these funds. Now, some of them are 0.83, 0.81, all the way down to 0 0.03. I really like 0 0.03. So I look at it when I was talking to Joe, I said, hey Joe, do you realize 
that you own all these Fidelity mutual funds that are charging you high expenses. And I'm not against Fidelity. Don't, don't get me wrong. We own Fidelity funds within our portfolios. And I, but I asked him, I said, hey, Joe, why all the Fidelity funds? And he said, well, you know, I'm at Fidelity and, and that's all I really know. I, I, just, I just go with Fidelity. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, I'm not trying to go down on Joe or, or beat him up for what he's doing. I want to show him what he's got and are there adjustments that need to be made. So I said, okay, you're paying $3,156 a year to own these Fidelity funds. Now, this fund right here, this is the Fidelity Mid-Cap Stock Fund. It's an actively managed mutual fund. Now you're down about 3% for the year, but if you look at the expenses, you're paying 0.83% for this fund. I said, what if you were able to get in a mid-cap index fund for a lesser fee. Would you want that? He said, well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to accomplish having some exposure to the mid caps. I said, okay, great. So what we need to look at is finding you an ETF or a mutual fund that gives you exposure to mid caps with a lot less expenses. Does that make sense? He said, yeah. I said, okay. So as we're looking at these funds, I said to him, do you want to have this kind of exposure to your expenses? And he said, no. I said, let me give you, let me show you a comparison. Now, my goal is to not bring someone on always as a client, but what I wanted to show him, I wanted to show him one of our portfolios. And I said, hey, this is our portfolio. We call it a Vanguard growth and income portfolio because we use Vanguard funds. I said, look at the expense ratio. 0.05 compared to yours of 0.6. I said, if you had the same amount of dollars in our portfolio compared to yours, you would pay $264 a year for those ETFs. Now again, Joe was going through a Your Financial EKG financial plan. He wasn't looking for me to become his financial advisor. So what I was showing him is not that come to me and let me manage your portfolio. It was, hey, there are funds out there that will accomplish what you're trying to accomplish with a lesser cost. Because if you look at our portfolio, look at these. The highest fund fee, 0 0.03 is the low, 0 0.07 is the high. So I'm able to say, hey, Joe, there are funds out there. I think VYM, is that the mid cap? No, that's the high dividend. Where's the mid cap on here? This is value. There's some value. VO, that's large. There's the mid cap. So here's the mid cap fund. Vanguard mid cap. Look at the the expense ratio, 0 0.04. So I said, hey, Joe, you can do what you're wanting to accomplish with a different fund, okay? And pay less cost. And I think that makes a whole lot of sense. The second thing we wanted to look at was correlations. So Joe's 58. He's stepping into retirement at 60. And we need to look at this and say, okay, how correlated are you to the overall market? So if we look at the overall market, we look at the indexes that he's correlated to, mainly, He's correlated to global markets and the U.S. market. So he's really correlated. His portfolio really follows the international and the U.S. markets. Now, that's not bad. That's actually just fine. We want to follow some sort of index. But you have to add the two together say, okay, we're correlated to these markets. How about performance? So we're going to kind of bring two and three together at the same time. So let's look at performance real quick. Now, I'm going to take out our portfolio. So here's Joe's portfolio. Over the last month, he's made 0.78% as of this recording. Over the last three months, he's down 3.91% as of this recording. Now, this is June 7th, 2022, so the market is down about 15%, the S&P 500. Six months, portfolio is down around 11%. And then year to date, he's down 13%. Now let's compare that to the S&P 500, right? Because that's, that's mainly what we're correlated to. So we compare that to the S&P and he's actually down worse than the S&P 500. Now this is a guy that's stepping into retirement and his portfolio is actually performing worse than the S&P 500. We go back to six months again almost a percent and a half worse than the S&P 500. So let's look long term. So anytime I start to see these short term divergences where the portfolio is not matching what the client is trying to accomplish, now I start to look long term because things happen within the market, right? We've had a shift in the overall market. If you're watching this in 2030, you've already seen the shift. But if you're watching this in 2022, you understand that the Fed's raising rates, so bond rates are starting to rise, which means 
interest rates are going up and bonds are going down. What we've seen in the market this year is that everything, baby with the bathwater, has been thrown out. X Energy. Energy is the only thing that's really kind of up this year. And so we look at the portfolio and we say, okay, maybe long term what you've done has been really good, but how about short term? Let's see what we've done short term. So if we look long term, Actually, he's not really even keeping up with the market. 15% is what the S&P 500's done. His portfolio has only done 8.66 over a three-year time frame. And I asked him, I said, do you trade this account a lot? And he said, no, 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 I just own, I buy and hold. And I said, that's great because now we get a truer sense of your performance. Over five years, market's averaged 13%. His portfolio's averaged seven. So here's the thing I really talked to Joe. I said, hey, you're not keeping up with the market in good times. The market's screaming higher here, you're not keeping up with it. But when the market's going lower, you're following it down. And so these are things that we need to look at. And I said, again, let's compare, let's go back to our portfolio real quick. Not that I'm trying to get you to become a client of mine, but I want to show you if we use a, a, a portfolio of low cost Vanguard ETFs, well diversified among different sectors, let's see how it's done. Well, year to date, down 10%, market's down 12, you're down 13. So yeah, we're down, but we're not down as much. We look at three years, Joe, you've only made 8%, S&P's up 15, Our, we call it more of a moderate portfolio because it's a growth in income, 13.35 and over five years, 13 for the S&P, 11 for us, and seven for Joe. Now, keep in mind, past performance is not a guarantee of future results. So we've got to look at this and say, okay, Joe, Depending on what you want to do in the future, you can continue to stay in your current portfolio, pay these high fees, take the risk that you're taking but not getting the reward on the upside, or you can start making adjustments today. Get into lower feed funds, get those expense ratios down, get, into, get your ETFs more balanced, more diversified, so you are accomplishing what you're wanting to accomplish within this IRA. You're getting the growth on the upside that you want, but you're not getting killed on the backside. So that's the same thing for you. Make sure that when you're looking at your retirement portfolio, you understand the fees that you're paying, what you're trying to accomplish, and is your performance lining up to that? And if you want us to look at that for you, all the details are in the description. Hey, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.